Excellent. Okay, we are here until 2.20 or until you run out of questions. So please raise your hand. Let us get the handheld mics to you. Let us know who you are, who you're with. And just a reminder that uh, recording these press conferences on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. Who has the first question, second row, right in front of me? Derek Young, K-State Online. Keontae, just what kind of problems can Montana State pose to you guys if they're playing their best basketball? Um, they're a real good team at getting their foul line. So we just got to – we've been practicing and preaching about um, guarding without fouling, um, just doing what we could do and what we could control. And fouling is one of the things we can control. So – and they get out on a fast break and get their points. To our right. Hey, guys, this one's for any of you. Zach Martin, KSNW in Wichita. Um, all of you guys are seniors. You guys all have experience in this tournament. Is there anything that you guys are trying to teach the younger guys on the roster to try to get them ready for tomorrow's game? We'll go far right and work our way left. Desi. I just felt like we're trying to set a standard, trying to build a legacy for the younger guys that this is what you want to play in, the best tournament in the country. So we're going to keep on working hard and try to keep doing what we do so they know what the standards are when we leave. Marquise. Uh, I don't have any experience. I haven't been here, but um, I mean, I have guys who, who's been here. Uh, they told me, you know, this is the best type of basketball you want to play in. Um, it's fun. It's March. And, you know, everybody's competing for something. So I just say, I just tell the young guys to embrace the moment, enjoy it, um, because, you know, you, you don't get opportunities like that, like this, um, too often. So just embrace the moment. Keontae. Um, same thing with Keith saying, just telling everybody to enjoy the moment. I mean, this is what we grew up trying to play in and for us to be here. I feel like all my guys are excited and we're just ready to play and showcase how much we love each other and the freedom that we have. Over our next question, in the middle of the room. Parker Cotton with the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Uh, Desi and Marquis, um, I'm sorry, Marquise, I was hoping that you could uh, follow up with what Keontae opened this press conference with and just say, over the course of film study this week, what have you noticed about Montana State? Who have you noticed about Montana State that you're going to have to be mindful of tomorrow? Um, they they have a lot of experience. Um, so I feel like, you know, just just with them losing um, to a Big 12 team last year, uh, they have a chip on their shoulder. So they might come out extra aggressive. Um, but, you know, they, they are good at getting to the foul line. They are good at turning people over. So um, we had a stat that whenever we have 11 or less turnovers, we are undefeated on the season. So that would be the goal, you know, coming into to Friday's game. Like Marquise and Ke oh, Keontae said, they're a very good team getting to the free throw line. Like, they're one of the best teams in the country doing that. So we just got to come in and control the game, less, less, 11 or less turnovers, and just do what we got to do to try to win, impact the game and win the game. Second row. <clears throat> hey, guys. Timmy Emerson, Manhattan Mercury. Uh, Really, for, for any of you, you guys have really kind of embodied that, that underdog mindset throughout the year, being picked 10th, going into uh, conference play, all that stuff. Uh, you guys are, you know, you're, you're, you're the three seed going against the 14 here. What, what do you need to adjust to go from being the hunter to the, to the hunted? We'll go left to right this time, can't they? Um, I mean, we just got to focus on ourselves. We just know, we know what it takes to be the hunted team and all the hunters. So we've been in that position before, um, like in conference play when we was going on a win winning streak. A lot of teams was trying to play their best against us. So I feel like we do a good job at adversity and just trying to keep each other confidence up and playing at a high level, really. So just we got to do what we got to do, win, um, go today and win the day, really. So, Marquise. Um, so I feel like we still are hunting. Um, no matter, you know, what, what seeding that they give us, I still feel like we have a lot to prove, um, including myself. And I know that, you know, this team is hungry. So, you know, just, I mean, we still hunting, even though we, we have a higher seed than everybody. Um, this tournament is about, you know, having fun, creating madness. And um, we have a lot of special things that we want to accomplish as a team and individually. So I just say, you know, keep that chip on our shoulder. Uh, we, if we keep that chip on our shoulder, play with the joy and love that we've been playing with all year, it's hard for teams to beat us. I feel, I feel like we're going, we we doing like what we need to do, but at the end of the day, we getting hunted, but like we still playing like the underdogs because we coming off a two game losing streak. So we want to show everybody why we one of the best teams in the country. So we're going to come out and execute and try to make a run in this tournament. Middle of the rim. Victor Flores, 4-6 Sports. 
What did you guys learn most from the last game, and, and how has this week off or so been? Uh, what have you guys kind of been focusing on the most in this layoff? Desi. Me. Yeah. Uh, like I said, we're coming off a two-game losing streak, and we, we know it's a surviving advance, and we don't want to go home. We're trying to make a run. We're trying to make history. We want to we want to show the K-State fans why, why we want the best teams and why we need them here each and every night. Marquise? Um, for, uh, I noticed that in the two games that we lost, we had 40 turnovers, which is unacceptable. And um, for us, that's our, our biggest issue. So if we can you know, control that, which, we, which I think we are, um, because we want to win that bad, um, then we'll be successful. So I just say the the two games that we lost, uh, turnovers have been an issue, and you know we we got that cleaned up um, these these last two practices that we had. Keontae. Um same thing with Keith is saying. I mean, we had a lot of turnovers the last two games, and a lot of fouls. We sent the team to the foul line a lot, so that's been our like main focus. Um, of just trying to get better at just guarding without fouling and just protecting the ball, not trying to make the home run plays, and just play simple basketball. So I feel like the last two practices we have, we've been had high energy and just having great practice. Fourth throw on the aisle. He's got Rich and Case Dad Athletics. Hey, I'm just curious, guys, how does it feel being in this moment right now? Um, amazing, really. I mean, it's a goal for me. I wanted to come back for my last year and just get to the tournament. and. We doing that now. It's just trying to make a run, and all our dreams. We all had the same goal coming in, and we just ready to have fun and just show all the K State fans, make them happy, and all our families happy. Marquise, uh, it's a blessing, man. All glory to God. Um, it's amazing what what faith and hard work could do, um, and you know everybody in this locker room had that from day one. So it's just just a blessing to be here. It's a blessing to be a part of you know March Madness. So I'm just happy. Desi. Crazy faith. Coach Tame been preaching since day one. You know, now we're here with Penn, we was picked 10 to be um, at Big 12. Now we finished third. But at the end of the day, like Coach Tame was preaching each and every day. Even though Marquise, the leader on the team, he was preaching there each day in practice. Even though we huddled, we was like, we want to make it to the NCAA tournament. Even though we pinned 10th in the, um, Big 12, we was like, no, nah, we're going to be the underdog. We're going to fight each and every night. We're going to try to come out and accomplish that. I feel like we did there as well, but we got more to um, prove. Back aisle. Andrew Houghton, Skyline Sports. Guys, Desi, you just mentioned it, Coach Tang's first year, but just how does it feel to be here on this stage with him in his first year? It's crazy because when, when Coach Tang came, he was like, he want to elevate this program, and, and he doing a hell of a good job this first season, and he going to continue to do that. And we got a bunch of good guys. We all bought in, and we all love each other. We um, happy for each other. It's love, joy, and happiness with us, with all, with us all. Marquise? Um, it's just, I mean, I'm just happy to see, you know, Coach Tang and you know our team getting this much success um, in in his first year. Um, you know, I wouldn't want to do it with any other guys that that's in his locker room. Um, we just worked hard from day one. Uh, we we enjoyed and embraced each other, you know, from day one, and I think that's why we were getting so much success um, because we just we just play with that love and joy. Um, and, you know, we still have a lot to prove. Um, this is one of the, the funnest tournaments that you could be a part of. Um, so I think, you know, it will enhance, you know, as we, we go on. Got it. Um, I mean, Coach Tang, he just had the right faith in all of us. Um, he told us his goal, and we all just bought into it and just trusted him. And as well, he trusted us. He listened to us. He's a great coach. Um, he know that we the one playing on the court, so Whatever feedback we have for us, he'll listen, and that's a big thing for us because we would want us playing. But other than that, I mean, we're just trying to come here and make a run, just make a legacy for our, the next guys that's coming up, and just get, bring a great experience and show them like this is what it takes to get here, and just keep going from there. Back to the room. Austin Parr, SWX Montana. A little bit of a different question for you guys. What, if anything, do you know about the state of Montana? And then a little bit of a follow-up. Uh, have you seen Yellowstone? Nah. I, nah. I don't know nothing about Montana. <laughs> yeah. you, you can educate us on it, though, if you want to. What, you got anything? <laughs> got, you, just, you got anything? You got anything for us? <laughs> All right. Cool. You've stumped our panel. <laughs> to our right. 
Uh, Marquise and Desi, uh, TJ Cleveland, KWCH. Uh, everybody knows Keontae's story about how the transfer portal helped him get here. But for you two, you know, Marquise, this is your first March Madness. Talk about how important the transfer portal was and, you know, just kind of looking back, you know, how it kind of changed your career. I mean, transfer portal was big. I feel like uh, it's, um, it's great to use it if you use it in the right way. Um, I feel like our team and our coaching staff did an amazing job of picking the right guys you know, for this program, for K-State. And I feel like, you know, just everybody that, you know, Coach Tang and the coaching staff wanted to wanted to pick in the transfer portal, they were going to be about winning. They were going to be um, good quality men. Um, and, you know, they were going to have a background of just, you know, being, being good people. And I think we used the transfer portal the correct way, how it should be used. And um, I'm just happy, just happy. For me, it's like Coach Tane, my, my route was different. I didn't get to campus till October. And Coach Tane and his coach staff each and every day value like crazy faith. I didn't know if I was going to be here or not, but they believed I was going to be here. So I just want to give a big shout out to their staff and whatever they did to me, because I was on film each and every day with them. It kind of emotional because I ain't know. Coach Tane kept on having that crazy faith. You're going to be here. You're going to be here. You're going to get here. I'm getting on the phone with Marquise. They was on FaceTime, Zoom, and et cetera. It's like, man, you're going to be here to stay focused, stay locked in. And I'm here, and I'm living out the dream that I always want to live out to. And my, I always want to get back to the Morris Manners, and I'm doing it. And we was picked 10th last, and we finished third. That's a blessing, man. I'm telling you, I'm so happy to be here with these guys. I love these guys. I love the coaching staff. Man, I'm just ready to go out there and give it the energy, enthusiasm, and have fun with these guys. Last question, second row. Desi, just, just going off that, can you kind of explain how close was it for, for you not, not getting to, to, to campus in time? How, how kind of tenuous was, was that until you finally got here and then got settled? Just kept working. It, it was very close, but I'm here, so that, that, that's all that matters. We moved forward from what I, was, what I had to go through, now I'm here. Um, I feel like I'm a factor on the team. They believe in me. I was going to do whatever I got to do to help the team win. So the past don't matter. It's all about the future and how can I impact it. All right. Thanks, guys. Great job. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. First of all, I want to thank uh, Gene Taylor um, for believing in me and uh, President Linton. This is for a kid from Trinidad, you know, to have an opportunity like this to be a part of this match, March Madness. You know, it's, it's really, really special and um, just extremely thankful and blessed to be here. Questions for Coach. Raise your hand. Let us know who you are, who you're with. First one, second row. Derek Young, K-State Online. Coach, just where do you think you have grown the most individually as a coach in your first year in Manhattan? Mm. Oh. Um, well, I hope I'm a better listener. You know, um, when you spend so many years waiting to become a head coach, you have all these ideas that you want to do and how you want to do it. Um, but I'm blessed to have the best staff in America and uh, extremely intelligent men who have done a lot of winning in their life. And you know, I hope uh, over the course of the year, I became a better listener. D. Scott Fritch and K-State Athletics. Coach, I'm just curious, just being in this moment, seeing You've been here before as an assistant associate head coach. Now you're head coach. How does it feel being in this moment? Like this moment hits a little different. You know, like everything that we've been doing up to this point, it's kind of like, you know, it was, hey, I know what to do. Um, I've never sat here with my name here. And 
So it kind of becomes real, you know. Not real in the magnitude of what we have to go do, but real in the magnitude of what God has done for me in my life. Aaron Beard with the AP. Coach, seniors are always valuable in the tournament, but this age we have super seniors who have even more experience than usual. I'm curious, kind of when you're starting a program, how valuable that level of experience has been to have guys that are even older than normal to start out with. Yeah, no, extremely valuable, man. When you look, you know, I always, like, equate things to football. And, like, in the Big 12, you know, all the, the teams in the Big 12 that were really successful in football had guys who were fifth-year quarterbacks, you know. And to have guys who have 100 college games under their belt, and, I mean, there are just certain things that you pick up that doesn't matter how talented you are that you can't gain it except through experience. And guys like Marquise and Desi and, you know, Keontae, those guys who have played so many games, Bebe, guys who have played so many games, they, they, they know all, they picked up a bunch of little tricks that make a difference, a small difference in a game that equates to a big difference in the final score. And uh, so it's extremely valuable. Middle of the room. Parker Cotton with the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Uh, Coach, I'm curious in the the film study that you've done with, uh, with Montana State in the past couple of days, who has stood out in particular that you, you feel you're, you're going to have to be mindful of? And then as a follow-up, did you have any familiarity with Danny Sprinkle and, and what kind of coach he is before this week? Yeah, I, well, I'm a, I'm a basketball junkie, so I, I watch all the games as late at night, whatever, whoever's on, whoever's playing. Uh, I know Coach Sprinkle was a heck of a player, and and now he's a heck of a coach. They win, right? They, they have a winning DNA. He's done a great job recruiting, uh, especially getting bigs from overseas. And those three kids from London, man, they have FIBA basketball experience under their belt. And uh, so they've, they've, they've played a lot of possessions, those guys. And he's done a great job developing those guys. And then at Baylor, we played Washington when uh, Raekwon was there. Um, and he scored double figures against us there, so I, I know what kind of talent he is. And, uh, you know, I mean, watched him in the tournament last year, and, you know, obviously that wasn't the result they wanted or the showing they wanted to show. So I, I know all summer long these dudes have been preparing for this, right? This is, this is not a one-week or three-day preparation for them for this game. This is a whole year that they've been preparing for this game. So I know they're going to be ready. And I told them, it's going to be a 40-minute grinder, right? Uh, they've, they've got big, strong bodies. They get to the free throw line. They make more free throws than their opponents shoot. You know, they are extremely physical and, and extremely well coached. So I, I'm looking forward to the opportunity. Back right. Uh, Blair Kirkhoff with the Kansas City Star. And you, you may have answered some of that with this question. But so in the preseason, you guys are picked 10th. And I can see where that can be used as motivation for, for a team. Well, now you're in the tournament as a three seed playing a 14. You know, you're the favorite. They're the ones that uh, uh, the opponent's the one that wants to come after you. So how do you want your guys to approach the game mentally? Um, we, we, we removed the numbers from the bracket. And it's one team against another on a neutral site. Um, we know they're going to be prepared. And we're going to be prepared. And we, we don't. We don't want them to chase us. We, we want to be the, the guys doing the hunting, you know, and I'm sure they're going to do the same thing. So, like, once, once that ball is tipped, the ball doesn't know, care about numbers or, like, who's seated higher. The ball, you got to go make it happen. Middle of the room in front of me. Victor Flores, 4 6 Sports. Um, knows your three-point defense has been very good. Can you explain why exactly that's been and then any other strengths that you, can, uh, that you think your team has had or shown this year? Man, uh, point of emphasis for us, uh, we, hopefully we stop the, the best shooters from shooting the ball and let the guys who aren't as good shoot. You know, um, didn't work out too well against TCU or West Virginia the last two games, so you know, I don't know about that. So, but, uh, you know, I think our guys take pride in, in Garden. To a right on the aisle. Hey, Coach Tang, I think you heard over there Desi and Marquise talking. I think you have nine guys on your roster that have never been here, and you obviously a head coach who has never been here. You know, do, he, Marquise said it, you guys did the transfer portal the right way. Looking back, you know, these guys, just take me back to that. All right, you want me to talk about 
us not having any experience in the tournament or how we recruited the portal? Yeah, there's any experience or not experienced, right? Every kid is like kids all over America watching this thing right now, whether their teacher's cool enough to let them watch it on TV or they got to sneak and watch it on the phone, right? They're going to stay up late tonight and watch games. You know, I mean, that's just you dream about this. You can go out in your backyard afterwards and, you know, shoot shots and imagine you're in the tournament. So just to have an ex this opportunity, right? It doesn't matter if it's your first time or your fourth time. It, it should never get old for you. And so it's just a tremendous blessing that we have this chance. Stay to our right here. You, you guys have struggled with turnovers in the past. In this little break that you guys have had since, since the TCU game, what, how do you focus in on that in practice to try and get that as, as solved as possible? <laughs> uh, just sh I, I just tell them now when we cross half court, just shoot the ball. Don't turn it over. <laughs> Left aisle. Hey, Jerome, Kelly Sharp right here with the Kansas City Star. Um, we've asked you a lot about, you know, some leadership qualities like Keontae Marquis have brought this season. I'm wondering what kind of leadership uh, Ish has given you guys off the bench. Uh, man, Ish has been tremendous because uh, Ish's role has changed and his playing time has fluctuated from, from game to game. And uh, he's just been tremendous saying all the right things on the bench, being a, a great teammate in the locker room, keeping guys focused. Um, you know, he, Ish has this really grounded quality about him that he's able to see the big picture uh, and what's best for the team, even in, when things aren't going well for himself. And so that, 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 that's a tremendous quality to have as a leader. Back on y'all. Coach Andrew Houghton, Skyline Sports. I want to ask about Marquise Noel, just how valuable is it for you having a point guard with that experience? He was one of the few guys that stayed on the roster after you came in. How valuable has that been? And then Montana State also has a guy like that, Darius Brown. How do you see that matchup playing out? Yeah, um, well, it was a blessing that Keith chose to stay. And, uh, you know, it showed that um, he cared about winning, right? And, uh, and he believed in us as a staff and helped us recruit. He actually, I mean, he's responsible for the whole team. Like, I mean, he went to so many um, – official visit dinners and breakfasts, and I thought he'd gained 20 pounds. Um, he ate so many meals, right, him and Ish, and so that, that was extremely valuable. And, um, you know, Darius, man, he's a three-plus three assist to turnover guy, defensive player of the year in the conference, uh, just steady. He doesn't get rattled, uh, makes all the right plays. Um, that, that last play in the semifinals against Weber State, when you know he goes left and he draws the help from the big and throws the great lob to Raekwon for the dunk. I mean, you just that's you know like as as a coach, it's always great to have a point guard like that. I'm blessed to have one. A coach is blessed to have one at Montana State. You know where you don't have to coach the ball, you can coach the other four guys, and that's just a tremendous blessing in any level, in any tournament, in any setting. Again, to our right. Coach, you talk so much about Desi being a winner, and that includes in the NCAA tournament. How, how has that kind of shown up in, in practice, just in terms of him kind of talking to the other guys that, that may not have this type of experience on, on what, to, what to expect and, and what to look out for? Uh, Des is able to keep everybody even keeled and moving forward and positive, like he doesn't get down. And because he understands it's a, you know, it's a journey. It's, you know, and uh, he's not an up and down guy, so level. And that helps everybody else. Any other questions for Coach? All right, thank you. Thank you, guys. Coach, we worked you hard, didn't we?